Now, it's been a violent year across the country, nowhere more so than in London, where more than 80 people have been murdered so far this year. Much of the violence is gang-related and some linked firmly to drugs. So, is the so-called war on drugs a lost cause or does it simply need more resources? Well, Neil Wood spent 14 years as an undercover police officer infiltrating drugs gangs. He's now written a book, Drug Wars, about his experience. And please say uh, he joins me now in this studio. What is your take on the situation? Is the, the war lost? I think it was lost a long time ago. Um, in, in, the book is actually the first history of the British part of, uh, the British, of the war on drugs and its place in the sort of global conflict. And we have a particular place in that conflict because for a long time we led resistance to the American policy of prohibition. And actually in the UK there was no connection with criminality the drug supply at all until we banned it and followed the sort of American way of doing things. Now I've, I've spoken this before as part of Leap UK, Law Enforcement Action Partnership, and obviously I've exposed uh, the kind of undercover work I used to do previously, but even I was really shocked by just how far we've gone and I think that's what's missing from this debate. I mean, William Haig was very good last week when he pointed out that Regulating cannabis, for example, would undermine the power of organised crime, and he's absolutely right. But what's missing from the debate is an understanding of just how bad things are. The power of organised crime has now reached a point where there is a crisis, and we're able. And I think for the first time, this book shows just how far that's gone. It's absolutely shocking. Wait, when you talk the about the, the power of organised crime, are you suggesting that it's infiltrating the establishment? Absolutely, and we can show that quite clearly. For, for the book, we interviewed people who are currently in witness protection. So they, these are people who, they don't exist, they, they live under, under pseudonyms, they had to leave their family and friends and they're not allowed to see them anymore. And now that is a police tactic or a, a criminal justice tactic which only exists because of the drug war. And what people are going to find really shocking is that even that, which is almost... Um, the last line of defence against organised crime, because of how else do you get people to give evidence, that last line of defence, even that is corrupted, and we can show that from the interviews that we've done. Also, people who um, we interviewed who manage uh, those, those protected witnesses. So, organised crime is infiltrating the establishment, so there are people in the, the police force, in our judiciary, who are in the, the pay of organised crime? Absolutely. And that, now, we have one of the best uh, police services in the world and, and obviously the vast majority are honest and, and do a fantastic job. But this is an £11 billion a year industry now, that, uh, even according to the, to the most recent estimates by the National Crime Agency. And that's an industry controlled with violence and corruption. And because we've spent decades trying to police this problem, all we've done is actually monopolise organised crime uh, much more efficiently. It becomes bigger organisations. This is why we have county lines now. It's, it's organised crime groups who are monopolising from the, inner, from the big cities and taking over the drug supply elsewhere. We interviewed for the book three generations of Liverpool gangsters to see how things have changed over time. And I think perhaps the most interesting question and, and comparison that we asked those three generations is how easy, when you were a young person getting into organised crime, how easy was it for you to get a gun? And the first person said to us, he said, well, I could have asked and we would have been taken to the higher ups and we would have had to explain why and then we would have been told no. And then you go jump to the third generation, it was a 16 year old, and uh, he said, well, how long have I got? I said, I could get a gun in two hours. In fact, once I wanted a gun, I had to wait a bit longer than I wanted to, so I took a hand grenade. A hand grenade? A hand grenade. We have 15-year-olds enforcing the drug supply on our streets of the UK using hand grenades. And the book shows quite clearly how we've gone from just having a few hundred heroin addicts to having 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds controlling that supply on the streets with hand grenades. Neil Woods, uh, fascinating talking to you. I'm sorry we don't have uh, more time. The, the book Drug Wars, um, I'm sure, is a, an illuminating read. Thank you so much for speaking to us tonight. Thank you.